one other thing that I want to talk about is when it comes to bringing these people into the schools or being involved in um, the different activities going on, there's so many barriers, um, whether it's language barriers or transportation barriers or work um, schedules and childcare and things like that. And I think that there's a misconception of of what parents may believe about oh, the school doesn't want me involved, or they may be intimidated to get involved, or the teacher thinks, oh, the parents don't care because they're not reaching out. And I just, I think that um, it's just all misconceptions. And ultimately we all want the same thing. We all care about the students and we want the students to be successful. So how do we combat all of these barriers? That's a great thing to talk about. You know, our, our operations at school are basically eight to four. And working parents work eight to five. I mean, they work the same hours we're in school and it's hard for them to get involved. And some of them have jobs that they can't leave or if they leave their dock pay. I um, I I have always had the opportunity, especially with my job with TSPRA, to get in front of superintendents about three or four times a year. And one of the things I tell them always is go to civic meetings, go do your state of the superintendent address, go to the banks, go to go to the realtors, talk to people about letting their employees have time to go to school, to visit with their, their teachers and their principals. Give them that 30 minutes or an hour a year. Even if it's one time a year, they get an hour that they're not docked, that they can actually go, go, you know, it's not, a, don't make it a burden. And that's what it is. You know, I had an employee that had two special needs kids. And when she came to work for me, I would, she was like, I don't have to take off to go to the art meeting. And I was like, oh, gosh, no. And she was like, everywhere else I've had to work, I've had to schedule PTO. I've had to schedule the art way in advance. I've had to take off work. You know, and I was like, no, no. Your family is your priority. And those kids are your priority. Go. And you know what? Her being gone an hour, hour and a half didn't affect our work one bit. You know? Right. I think a lot of that, I mean, it goes back to leadership and influence, but I think it takes the leader of the organization to talk to other leaders about, you know, um, you let we, we want our schools to be better and our schools are better when our parents are involved. And the only way we can let them be involved is that connection. And it's going to happen during the work day, you know? Yeah. Uh, some things I can't expect my teachers every night to be at work until nine o'clock because that's after hours for your people. Can we work together and just once a semester, twice, once a year, once a semester, let parents have an hour, have a half, an hour and a half, whatever it takes for driving time, a half a day to go visit. You know, the productivity I think in the workplace is better if a, if a mom has three kids and the employer says she can have half a day to go visit all three of your teachers, but I need you back at one o'clock. Um, that's a, that's a fringe benefit that that employer is giving to the community. And again, I think it taught it's, but I keep saying it, it's leadership, talking to other leadership to make it happen. You know, I, I job at Teesboro, I've worked with a lot of hotel, the hotel industry a lot because conference and meeting space and, you know, they're hourly workers, they can't go to school and have parent conferences. They, if they're 15 minutes late to work, they get fired. They make minimum wage. They can't take off an hour, you know, to go meet. So, so do things to allow that as a benefit of the job. And, and, and the more your, your workplace is better for doing that because your workers are, are happier and things are easier. Yeah. And they have peace of mind knowing that they have the time to go do that. <laughs> well, that made me think also, we have so many more virtual options as well. Um, leveraging Zoom or Google yeah, Meet, things point. like that to connect. And um, maybe it's even a conversation like finding out when is the best time for the parent in order to do that. And if that doesn't align with my conference period, then it's a conversation with the principal to find coverage so that I can go have that conversation yeah, well, and, and build that connection. That's a great, great, great advice. Employers can make time for, for the employees to Zoom with teachers if they need to. And, you know, a lot of our employees, or a lot of our parents don't have access to technology. So at the workplace, mm -hmm. there is technology. 
And if the employer, I love that idea. I'm going to start, I'm stealing it. When I talk to superintendents, <laughs> talk about it. Have, have, have ask employers, have a, a room, break room or a place where, where your employees can talk to their teachers face to face on a Zoom. Yeah. And, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Hey. Right.